Okay, we have enough people so we can get started. Um, we have a quorum. Let's see. see. Um, I think we need everybody to introduce themselves. I'll call you out on the way I see you on the screen. Uh, Les? Yeah, Les Segundo staff. No one's here with me. Makala? Makala Kamuana Kauai. I'm alone. Ron? Ron Terry. I'm from the Big Island, alone in the room. Rachel? Rachel Sprague on the island of Lanai, and I'm here alone. Gordon? Gordon, you're on mute. Gordon, you're on mute. <laughs> okay. I don't know if he can hear you. No, I guess not. Um, okay, well, we know he's there. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's... No, I got it. I got it. I was on, oh. I'm on two meetings. So, <laughs> yes, Gordon Scruton from Honolulu. Um, I have a couple of people in the room behind me. Okay. Great. Uh, we can call this meeting. Oh, and I'm Robin Kay. I'm on the island of Lanai, and I'm I'm alone in this room. Um, we can call this meeting to order. We have a few things on the agenda. So these um, ones are, are just like evil pages. Um, a few things on the agenda, but the most important thing for us to talk about is is recruiting and transitioning. Um, new members. Gordon, you should mute now. <laughs> yeah, Gordon, we can hear you talking to your colleagues. No, it's other people talking. No, yeah, no. It's can you mute, Gordon? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, so I had a, I, I thought that we could start off the conversation about policies and procedures for recruiting new members um, by asking a couple of questions. First of all, how do we prioritize the kinds of people, and I don't, I mean that in terms of backgrounds and, and experiences um, that we recruit. And then how do we um, organize the outreach so it has some consistency and legitimacy? And then thirdly, who and how do we make the contacts? So let's I think start we with- back up a little. Okay. You know, uh, I think our efforts to recruit other members are good. Um, and and commendable, but that's really not you know the the primary way for getting new members. I think um, you know this is probably most of all it's open to anybody in the state who's interested, and a lot of people don't know about it. So um, and it's a job of the you know essentially the governor's office and the boards and commissions to sort people out. You know, people that volunteer to serve on some commission uh, or in particularly in this commission, you know, to do that. So our effort should be seen as something supplementary, encouraging people to apply. We're we're not this isn't the primary way of getting members. And I think if there was a more success um, with people applying, if people were just dying to get on our commission, we wouldn't have to do this. I just want to say that at the outset. I think you're right on in terms of the reality. I'm sorry, in terms of the legality. But in terms of reality, boards and commissions did a horrible job for us. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and and had we not been a little more active, yeah. Uh, I mean, I look at Rachel as an example. I mean, you know, I knew of her incredible skills and great gifts that she would bring to us. Sorry, Rachel, I don't mean to be so nice to my neighbor, but it's true. My point, Ron, is, is that you're right. But if we just wait for boards and commissions, it, it may never happen. We had to we had to push them. I mean, literally, Rachel and I, uh, sorry, Onana and I had to um, push them aggressively to get on it. So I'm not sure that we should be secondary. I'm I'm a little more comfortable with maybe, you know, simultaneous. Okay, clearly, that's, that's wait, a good way to think have of to it. go through the process. And, and if I find someone that I think would be great, I have to get them to apply to, I can't give them the position. Right. But in, in terms of outreach and communication and connection, I, I'm very reticent to leave it just to boards and commissions. No, but since we are really this, this well, I would still call it a secondary method of getting me members in terms of the legal stuff, then I think it, it, in some ways, it gives us more latitude, but it also gives us some responsibility. You know, we have to, we have to try to create a balanced commission and not just do our, you know, repeat our biases or, or, or whatever. It's, it's a, it's a heavy, it's a heavy lift, really. You know, I asked um, Michelle. You know, I, I recruited her, 
and kind of sort of recruited Dawn. I think she was getting it from a couple different angles. And I definitely recruited Mary, although Mary had uh, previously uh, applied for the uh, this commission and she was ignored for two years. Um, they wouldn't even uh, send her name to anybody. Um, so, you know, I, I hear that. Um, but, you know, we it, it's tough for us to like make balances. Okay, we're going to get this, or we'll get three of this, two of that, five of that, you know. That's a little beyond our abilities or or our responsibilities. Other folks have some comments, thoughts? I was I was um I was pushed by a legislator to um to sign up and um and to be assertive um about it and i think um each of our legislators are in positions where they have certain constituents that uh, are in tune that are informed that are that have opinions and and skills um and uh, and i don't think we should ignore the potential there because they are exposed to um so many more people than i am um yeah, I, I think I, last I, me, go ahead. at the last meeting, we talked about the legislators as uh, particularly Gabbard and Lowen in, in our case, but also your own individual legislators as one source, one good source of making recommendations. But I want to go back to Ron's point. I, I want to I, I want to have a I'd like to have a little more discussion from the rest of us about the balance. What I'm proposing is a balance of how we do this. Um, Gordon, Rachel, any any thoughts about that? I, I know as far as like from where I'm coming from, it, it's really tough to get our construction people involved. I mean, like we said, we like to find and groom our own replacement. So when we step down, we have someone ready to stop it, step in. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'm the chair of the, uh, the General Contractors Association Environmental Committee. And I mean, it's, 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 it's tough just to get members to that. And, you know, I've been the chair going on two years now. And, and I don't have a vice chair because nobody wants to be a vice chair. So um, somehow we've got to find the right people who are enthusiastic and, you know, are, are willing to work instead of be a fly on the wall. And I'm finding that difficult in my business. So, Yeah, I mean, that's been my experience as well, is, is trying to find people with some energy and enthusiasm. And um, But, I, you know, just one more comment, Ron, about, about what you said, and that is, and boards and commissions, I don't want to beat them up too badly, but they didn't even send out acknowledgments to any of the any anybody who had applied to be part of us. It was so, several people had a two-year wait. So perhaps this perhaps the approach should be to work with boards and commissions as well, to be a little more um involved in what they do and encouraging of them to be more active. Maybe that would work. Well, you know, the I, th I think that, that our, whatever our, our rules say broad and balanced representation of education, business, and environmentally pertinent disciplines and professions, such as the natural and social sciences, the humanities, architecture, engineering, public health and planning, education, and research institutions with environmental competence, <laughs> agriculture, real estate, visitor industry, construction, there you go, Gordon. Media and voluntary community and environmental groups. So, I mean, that's literally the list. So maybe what we should do if we want to be fair and balanced like Fox News is uh, is look at, um, you know, who do we have in those positions currently? Who, and who are we missing? And who will we miss if people step down? I think May is going to be my last meeting. You know, so whatever boxes I check, um, you know, and I and I think I check a few in here. Um, you know, you we you may want to cover. I think that'd be maybe the fairest way for us to do it. You know, because we could stack this commission if we wanted to with all kinds of you know people. I've seen it happen. That's why I say that. 
and um, more on the county level. But, um, you know, we, we, I think we really do want to be balanced. And, you know, who are we missing now? You know, we, we don't have any, you know, you got Roy as a design professional. We don't have any architects. Um, public health, um, you know, we don't really have anybody from that perspective. Mary's real estate. Um, we don't have any farmers. Um, you know, people that, that do agriculture in some way or another. We don't have anybody in the visitor industry. And we don't have any media people. We certainly have voluntary community and environmental groups. Thank you, Makahala. And I think Tessie maybe kind of fits in there too. Um, so, you know, those are the areas that we're kind of maybe a little short on. Maybe we could prioritize those. I think, you know, as you were talking, I, I, I made a part of my to-do follow-up list. And that would be to put it together a chart of all of those categories and circulate it, have less circulated so that you can all individually, I don't know enough about everybody's background and I'd rather have you, Ron, check off the six boxes that you have and same with Makala. And, and that might help us prioritize. And um, and again, being sensitive, you you absolutely, I'm, I'm not trying to argue with you, Ron, you raised a really good point. It's we're not the primary solicitors in the way the system's supposed to work. But we absolutely need to be more aggressive in, in the recruitment process uh, as much as we can, which is getting people to get to boards and commissions and then getting boards and commissions to follow through. Yeah. And then, you know, beyond that, it's up to the boards and commissions and the governor. So even if we try to stack it, we really can't because it's it's up to them who they pick. But I just figured, you know, I just want to mention that integrity from the get go, you know. And I know I'm talking to people with incredible integrity here, but I just want to make it look right, you know. Well, and I think that, you know, the, the other piece of it you just referenced is the governor, who obviously makes the final decision. And I remember last year, we, with all the trouble we had with boards and commissions, we finally went to the governor and he made it happen. He made it move. So, so yeah, we have to have a connection with um, our new governor. Um, and maybe they beefed up boards and commissions since last year. One of her comments was she was so understaffed. So maybe they have more more people. I don't know. But but um, let's take this this component of our role. Oh, as, uh, let's take this component of our role a step further. And and how do we? I, I'll send out this chart, and we'll get a list of who's missing. And then how do we? In addition to what we talked about last time, which was looking for our own replacements. Oh, and and by the way, I'll also ask Les to circulate a, a list of terms. I think we did this once before, but I couldn't find mine. So we know when, Ron, you're leaving and who else is going to come after that. Um, but then how do we, how do we, is there a need or a way to organize the outreach that we do? Let's assume we see that we need, for example, an architect, which would be a very logical and critical thing for us. How do we go about that? How do you, how do we, I mean, Rachel, do you ask Charlie to, to, to apply or other architects that you work with? Not just Charlie, he's the only one I know. Um, how do we do it? Should it, I guess my question is, since this is a strategic planning conversation, should it be an organized, more formal system like I don't know. We, no, everybody's got to notify on now to who they intend to talk to or so, something like that. What do you think? Uh, um, I, I just had a comment. I pulled up our, web, our website and I was thinking like, you know, for, um, I'm just thinking out loud. You guys could say, no way, that's not very smart. Um, but like, you know, regular companies, they have like, a. am looking at the banner that says home environmental council, submittal for an open for comment rules update, blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of uh, companies have careers or I don't know if we can add something up here that says join us and you click on that and you you get an application and you can fill it out and you know and and maybe you know because right now there's no way to, to say that you, you can join the group you know what I mean so I don't know if we can add something to the banner that can have people submit applications and say hey how do you join or I, I want to join you um you know that if somebody opens up the website, that means they're interested already. So uh, if we could take it a step further, where you know we said something to with join us, and they click on that, and there's a 
application to fill out to join the council. I, I don't know, just something like that. I'm just throwing that out. I that's, a great that's a great idea, Gordon. It's and it's a would great link, idea. Yeah, it would link right to boards and boards and commissions um, for the application form, which was easy to fill out. So yeah, that's a great idea. Um, anybody else? What else? How do we how do we how do we get more people interested? How do we try to fill the gaps that we have in addition to what we talked about last time, which is doing our own? I think having, I mean, having either Onauna or someone that she designates as a point person to be at least thinking forward about upcoming vacancies, whether they're scheduled or whether folks are thinking about needing to step back and and thinking, like Ron mentioned, or across that breadth of not just a kind of one for one replacing exactly who's on right now, but thinking about the kinds of topics that we want to talk about and think about, and whether we have the people like visitor industry and ag are two huge ones, which would be great to get folks. And maybe again, and then maybe, then maybe you can think about. We can all think about the. Uh, you know, like a lot intersectionality, a lot of people that can fill multiple roles and saying, okay, so let's, let's try to hear the roles we're looking for when members are of the commission or the council currently are going out and, and doing our network recruiting that it sounds like folks tend to do, then it's thinking about not just themselves, but what other roles we, you might be able to have people meet so yeah it's i mean it seems like having at least someone know <laughs> um not, not necessarily approve because like you said they have to go through the boards and commissions process but just having someone know or be able to communicate about the needs and and who's putting in effort would be probably useful i think that's great a great idea too because it, it it's going to avoid two of us or three of us going to the same person um, without knowing, you know, Rachel, you may talk to someone here and, and me too, and they're going to think we don't know what the hell we're doing, which is likely. So I think having some kind of point person is a good idea. Um, what else? Anything else on recruiting and, and outreach to get new members? Well, then let's talk about the next step. Let's assume that we get Ron Terry's replacement, and there'll probably be three people in order to replace Ron's skills. Um, how do we deal? How do how do we make a better? How, how do we create a transition system? Um, there was there was none for me. It was you just on and you just go to the next meeting. Um, so the learning curve was was challenging. Um, so how do we deal with that? How do we make those people that are first joining us um, better prepared and on the ground to run. One of the things that um, we've been um, dealing with or not dealing with um, are the frustrations of, um, of just function, business function with the Sunshine Law. And we get an orientation, but it's clearly not enough. I think of the frustration that that Mary has experienced specifically um, in trying to communicate with fellow committee members and things like that. It's it's frustrating, and um, I, I I'd really like to see whatever that orientation is after you say hello and thank you for coming. Now this is how hard it is to get anything done. Um, I'd really like to see that. Um, beefed up. Who else? What else? I mean, think about, Ron, for example, think about the training that goes on on planning commissions. I mean, I, I, Sally's always commenting on, because um, she's had to sit through so many uh, as new members come on, but how valuable it is for teaching the new people about zoning and about CZM and about SMAs and all of that. Um, do we need to do something internally for bringing people up to speed on rules or roles or anything like that? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a brilliant idea. And I've never been on a planning commission, but I have heard about those um, those training sessions. And uh, their responsibilities are really heavy. And you can see you can see why they do that. But um, yeah, like you, I didn't get any I didn't get much of an orientation. I was recruited by Scott, though. So I was fortunate because, you know, Scott Kate kind of gave me, you know, 15 minutes of his time. And I listened to every word because uh, he, he really knew what he was doing. And he threw me into the fire, too. We were doing the rules. And he said, I need you for that. And it's like, OK, so now 20 hours a week, I'm working for free for you. OK. Um, but uh, yeah, th that'd be something that, you know, would probably have to be done. We got to think about who would do it. I don't think uh, ERP has the bandwidth to do that. Right, Les? Yeah. You guys are. Yeah, are we start. Yeah, we're 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 trying our best to do the work of all four people, you know. Yeah, I I don't think that could happen. Um and I don't think Scott can do it because he if yeah. anything he has more roles now. Oh. Yeah, he's he's hard to get a hold of. Yeah, I know. So, I think it has to be us who does it and new members can come on it any time i guess but they they usually it's you know i mean a good time to do it would be maybe after people are confirmed which usually happens in march april when the legislature can you, you know you, you might have been in a few meetings before then but maybe at that time we know you're on we have everybody that's probably going to be on for the year is is the new people and we could do like an april meeting where we we set aside an hour really to do it and then i think in terms of what we present it's probably up to us you know it's we'll, we're gonna have to invent it and write it and do it i think we should send it by scott send it by les and tom too um and jen for that matter you know because they have a lot of experience with this but then um, it's going to be up to us to write it and and do it That makes sense to me. I mean, that would have been really helpful to me. I got recruited at a Kauai planning conference meeting by Scott, and and um, we had a really good conversation, and I felt comfortable enough to say yes. And he asked me some really tough questions subsequent to that about my um, my past experience and as being kind of radical. And you know, I, it was a very thorough process and very well done. So. Yeah, and I like the idea, Ron, of, of us doing it internally, of us developing the agenda and the content. We might need to bring in, you know, um, some some additional people to talk about specific components of it, but I think we're going to have to do it ourselves, too. The Attorney General, um, I just thought the AG would be a good person to add into the mix when we do it, because so much, um, a lot of the, the difficulties and conflict that have arisen are here are because of the special rules that we have to we have to live with. Anybody who's been through the minutes recently, you know, the whole what has to be and what is not in the minutes and when you do them and all that, that's <laughs> that's maddening. <laughs> and you know, we just gotta we just gotta let people know. Yeah, you know, this is this is what's expected of you. This is the lines you can't cross, that sort of thing. And these are the reasons those lines exist. You know, it's not it's not just um, somebody bored drawing lines. I mean, litigation has occurred and actions have been taken and da 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 that create this system. It's not just out there to make life hard on us. You know, it's there for a reason. And generally speaking, for protection of rights, somebody's rights anyway. Um, so you know, it's a it there's reasons for this stuff, and you don't get to just rail against it you know yeah we try not to I, another thing i thought of before is that we should have some sort of affirmation about a code of ethics um that that we need to adhere to um and it's difficult because you know uh 
we're, we're brought in from all these perspectives, but um, we can't advocate strictly on their behalf. Like I, I'm an EIS professional and, and, and I see things that make that, that would make things harder or easier for EIS professionals. Uh, maybe even things that make EIS professionals more money or less money. And I can't vote in good conscience on, on that basis alone. I, I, I can't take it out of my mind, but I have to have a broader perspective. I'm here because I have that knowledge, but I can't use my position to advance myself or my industry. Like Gordon too, you know, he can't just try to be, you know, make things easy on construction. That's the only reason he's there. He's got that perspective and he brings it to us, but in the end, his ethics make him vote, you know, for what's best for the state, you know, not, not just for his industry. And that's what I have to do. I have to, I have to vote for what's, what's best for the whole state. And sometimes I find myself voting against my own interests because I, I clearly see, you know, that's really what, that's really what we need. And I've got to do things that make life harder on me, not easier. And um, I, I think a discussion of that, you know, the ethical things that you get into, it's not easy. It's not black and white. No, that's a really good point, Ron. It's not Having supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. And when we pick people for this job, we need, you know, that I, I know that's one of the things. So that's why Scott had that hard conversation with you and with me, too, you know. Um, are, will you be able to to put you know whatever biases and interests you have aside and put them in, put it in a box and work for the common good? A lot of people yeah. can't. Right. No, I was. He asked very fair questions, um, but they were important to the organization, to the environmental council at the time. So, um, any other comments from folks We're talking still about transition and orientation and uh, code of ethics and a lot of good stuff coming down. I'm taking lots of I'm notes. Just, I'm, I'm trying to think back, Robin, to some of the other boards and commissions we have sat on, you and I on several, um, and um, what our experiences have been there, good, bad, and otherwise, um, and use that a little bit. I think I think there there are some very specific aspects of this commission that are that differ um with others i've served on and and for me the main one is the interface between our council and planning departments for one with you know exemptions and that kind of thing direct communication and being clear on our role when we talk to people like that so that we don't make ourselves sound more than or less than the job we're trying to do that that's not all that common for folk i mean it would be for people in the higher echelons of construction or in the real activist world to be communicating with their local county departments and that kind of thing but for for most folks that's not that's not usual and um and that's a that's a definite piece of it because Everybody has one hand tied behind their back these days, you know, everybody does. Um, and uh, to have to have somebody from the government angle in there, not on the not on the council, but maybe as part of some sort of orientation. Say, look at this is this is how it is from from the cheap seats. <laughs> this is how it is, you know, from our from our perspective and our experience. Um, because every time I talk to them, I'm I'm either reminded or enlightened, most often enlightened, by how complex their um, their gig is. It's easy to forget when you're mad at them all the time. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, what else, folks? Anything else? Talking about transition and orientation and <clears throat> training. All I keep coming up with is what I can do individually. And one of the things that keeps appearing in my notes over and over again is talking to my planning director. You know, does he have people that he's working with? Or da, 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 and what does he wish? Again, it's like, you know, what do you, do you know what the council does? How could they help you? What would you want them to know? 
that kind of thing, you know, using that the consumer, the end result, right, which is in our case often there. Um, what do they see, you know, because for, for Kauai, they don't have an exemptions list and I'm still, you know, I'm beating on that door. So they don't have an interface with us right now at all. And, um, and I can't force that. And I'd love to tell them why it's so important, but frankly, they get everything they want done whenever we rain, flood or slide. So they just, they don't, they don't wait for permits. They wait for water. And when, when, when the water gets high, they get busy, busy, busy and do all the things they wanted to do that they didn't need a permit for. That's, that's the SOP. Is there any um, value in having, having like a mentor buddy system so that Ron, when your replacement comes in, we attach him or her to one of us. Um, is, or to that... him. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm assuming that based on what we said last week that Ron, for example, will play an active role with helping to find someone from um, his categories. But once on, um, I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, uh, no, I think it's that's a great idea. Um, someone that they can talk to about, you know, if they have questions, because uh, you can't talk to Scott. <laughs> and Not anymore. Not Anana anymore. Is, Anana is equally busy. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, she hasn't actually answered any of my emails in the last month. Yeah, and she's no, very, no. very. Communication can be a challenge with her. Yeah, as well. and she, but she would testified on the, to the ledge. Thank, thank God, I, I thanked her for that. I went on the ledge and saw testimony from our group. You yeah. know, yeah, she did that. So she's she's doing stuff, but yeah, so we can't really rely on the director or the chair. It's it's got to be somebody else on the committee who yeah, has a little more time. You know. Yeah, well, that's the other thing I was going to raise. One of the things that I think, and I don't know how we quantify this without becoming very anal, is communicating to new folks how much time is expected of them. You know, we're all on, we're all, all of you guys are really very busy. You all, most of you have jobs. Um, and this has taken a lot of time. Um, I, I know, Ron, you with exemptions, it's a huge amount of time. It is, yeah. And, and so I think it's, I would rather be upfront with new people than have them grumble after the third meeting that, holy shit, I didn't sign up to do three hours a, a week for this. I don't have that time. So painful as it might be to have, have some way of communicating how much time is involved in this. It's not just the meetings. We, obviously, we all know that. Um, what do you think about that? much as I think it will discourage people, I think it's better to be upfront. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it later. You didn't tell me, you know. Um, I don't remember being told either way. Most of the people I've recruited, um, I, I knew they were going to, I knew they were, they, they knew what they were in for. It didn't take much on my part. I'd say one of them, maybe not so much and has, expressed a little concern about why why so much work um but yeah we we got to get that across um wonder if we should make a white a white paper kind of thing you know um just want to toss something out um, I, I volunteered through the uh, General Contractors Association, um, and and my application okay. took a year. So to find a replacement for Rod, it's going to be a while. So I mean, I don't, I don't know how much um, like Rachel's and everybody else's thing took. Um, but I mean, if it comes May and we're looking for somebody, it might be next May by the time we get somebody. Yeah, and we're still not full, right? I mean, we have a member who I guess got appointed, but I've never seen her. Right. 
I have no idea who she is or what she does. We've had a couple of those in the past too. Um, so we we're, we have we're entitled up to fifteen, right? And what do we got now? Thirteen. I think we have two vacancies. So is that right? Do we have two vacancies or just just Moana's position? Oh, uh, I think we have two vacancies. Yeah. So. You know, it's a good point that you you keep putting this on the agenda, Rob, and thank you for, for being so diligent about it. Uh, maybe we should make it really urgently clear in the meeting today that um, we need to recruit yesterday. Yeah, and, and again, given boards and commissions lethargic approach to this, we got to get the names in now and we got to encourage boards and commissions. Otherwise, we'll be down. I mean, luckily, we had the quorum rule change, so we're OK in that context. But um, we, 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 it's, it's much better when there's a full boat. That's less yeah, time. Rob, Robin, I'm looking I'm looking back and I apparently I speeded through because I'm I believe I applied in January of last year and received a nomination letter from the governor in like February. And then it took until the end of April or early, or maybe end of March, beginning of April. Beginning of April was the nomination hearing. And then the Senate confirmation vote, I think would have been into, into April, May or something like that. Yeah, but that um, seems like it's about as fast as it's going to go. Because if, if to catch to catch this this year's legislature, if they ha if boards and commissions actually gets the nominations to the governor's office, there, there may very well be applicants pending at boards and commissions right now. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think we need to have a conversation with them. It's probably an Onana conversation or Scott um, to find out, you know, what's going on with them. I think that's fair. There could be a stack of names we don't know anything about. I doubt it, but you never know. I mean, especially with the incoming um, administration, I know that, you know, there, I think people may, may have, this is me being trying to be optimistic, that folks have been kind of in the mindset of like, ooh, applying for potential roles within the new administration because they were soliciting so many applications for you know, staff and other appointee roles, maybe somewhat folks thought, hey, oh, hey, I could serve on a board and commission, but that's probably overly optimistic and there's probably nothing. But Scott should be able to find out, right? Yeah, I mean, she did tell us when we finally got got her to pay attention. But, um, and again, I don't even know if she's, if it's still the same person that's running it. Um, but we do need to get on that. So good point. Okay, well, this was very helpful. You all have been very thoughtful here. Um, any other comments? Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to postpone the fourth piece of the agenda uh, on the annual report because we really need to hear how that concluded, how the conversation Scott raised at the last meeting gets concluded in terms of what's, is there a requirement for them to do an annual report in which we're supposed to sit? So um, I don't know that we can talk about that. So you I just, um, but we are talking about a little bit, so you'll bring it up at the meeting and make sure that Scott, we, that we do need an answer, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, is there anything else in, in this in the agenda items of transition and new members that anybody wants to add? Okay, uh, thank you all very much. Good conversation, spirited, thoughtful, um, as, as usual. Um, we'll see you at one o'clock. Thank you, Robin. Very organized. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, good discussion. Thank Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.